Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to talk about the pens I keep in my pen pouch along with the fountain pens that I have, what I've currently inked, and kind of how I take care of my fountain pens. So this can just be like a one-stop pen 101 uh, until I want to do an updated video. So the pen pouch that I'm currently using is a Deldi pouch. These sort of like slide down and slide up. They are a little bit too short to actually hold a full Tombow dual brush marker, but usually I don't have this many in them when I'm traveling. I just have one or two and you can angle them and still zip it closed. This particular one is like a black and a tan color. I found mine on Jet Pens. I do not know if it's still available. If this particular one is, I will link it, but I know Jet Pens uh, carries a lot of different varieties of these and they come out in like limited edition colors and things like that. It does have a zip closure and the main reason I ended up um, picking one of these up is because I travel so much. I like having a vertical cup holder when I am not at home because it makes finding my pens <laughs> a lot easier. It also keeps them like the ink in a better position for like my felt tip markers and things like that. So I feel like my pens don't dry out so fast because I can kind of strategically put them tip down or tip up, etc. whatever I need uh, when I travel. So I thought I would just kind of swatch the ones that I have in um, my two different notebook series so you can sort of see the difference. I have a Hobonichi Weeks Mega, which is the cream to my river paper, and I have a bullet journal edition two notebook with Blake Term. So this is the 120 GSM, and it is also a cream color. So um, these might look a little bit different on a brighter white paper. But I thought I would just go ahead and start with the Tombows. I do own more Tombows than what I have here. Not that many more but a few more um, but this is just sort of the color selection that I have been reaching for when I'm doodling or highlighting or wanting to add accent color so let's walk through the ones that I have Okay, and then I'm just going to write in the numbers so you guys have a reference as I go through these today. So these are the ones that I like to use a lot. As you can tell, I kind of go for these more like warm tone uh, or tone types of vibes. This is my favorite purple. I've used this one for like four years now. I have like a 12 pack of them. I pull this one in a lot. The nice thing about this paper is the color swatch a little bit more true to color in comparison with the cap versus the Tomoe River paper where I find that the color is almost always a little bit lighter. The Tombos are my favorite marker to use use on um, my Tomoe River paper, but all the colors come out a little bit lighter. So when I swatch a marker, I like to bring the Tomoe River paper with me because it does always appear a little bit different. So I'll do them kind of next to each other for reference for you. So just as you, they're a little bit lighter, they're a little bit less saturated. This gray barely shows up. 942 doesn't show up super well either. And I find this purple really hard to see for me personally in person on this paper as well, but you can see it. And the nice thing about the Tomoe River paper is you can layer it up. If I go over like 942 twice, this N75 twice or the 620 a couple of times, it changes the color, just deepens it a little bit and I can see it just as easy, just with a couple strokes. So they're still really usable and um, they don't bleed through on either paper which is something that I really like and I enjoy that I can use these dark colors on both of the planners really well so these are my current favorite Tombows I use them for highlighting lettering and anytime I'm coloring in a sketch in my planner these are the markers I'm typically going for because I like how they build up they layer up and I know what pens work with them where the Tombow isn't going to smear them so they're kind of my my go-to on that front I think from here, let me move into my fine liners. 
Okay, so I only keep two different fine liners in my pen pouch, and these are the Tombow Mono Drawing Pens. I have the 01 and the 03. I know it comes in a bolder tip too, like a 05, um, but it's not my favorite. But these are just a felt tip fine liner that I find perform really well on the Tomoe River paper. If you like the Sakura uh, Pigma Microns, I think that those work on the Tomoe River paper too, but I find that they take just like one second longer to dry than these do. So these are kind of my go-to. Um, if I want to do any sort of fine lining or if I actually just want to write in my planner and have a little bit of a darker, bolder look, this is the pen that I go for. Um, so I really like this in my uh, Hobonichi's for sure. And if you like a felt tip marker, this would probably be the one that I would recommend you try, but there are others that work as well. The nice thing about these is you can highlight them with any of the Tombow Dual brush pens as well. So another reason that I particularly like them. So let's talk brush pens. I currently keep four in my pen pouch. I have the Tombow Furunosuke hard tip and soft tip brush pen. These typically come in a two pack. They're really accessible. The hard tip is definitely my favorite. It's like in a navy body and the soft tip is black and gold, but I do use both interchangeably. I really like both of these on Hobonichi's Tomoe River paper along with in my Loic term. And these, when they dry, can be highlighted with a Tombow without any smearing. This one here is one I picked up on suggestion from my friend Randy from randy.plans. And this is a pilot, I wanna say, <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm gonna totally get this wrong. I will link it down below. This is the only Pilot brush pen that I have. It is in an extra fine tip, and this has got to be probably my favorite brush pen to write with. I can get really precise and detailed, and I like how my lettering looks with this. I'm still learning how to letter and do calligraphy. Um, I'm, I'm still a novice, I would say, but this pen is really fun to write with. The only thing for me is that it smears when I highlight it with a Tombow. So if I write something and I want to add some color in the background, I have to be more strategic when I use it because this one will smear on me. This is a zebra brush pen. Again, I do not know the full name, so I will put it down below, but it is the only brush pen I have from Zebra. It's got a little bit of a bolder tip. It feels somewhere in between both my Tombow uh, Fudonosuke is between the hard and the soft. It's definitely a stiff tip, so you can get really precise with the lettering. I think a stiffer tip is better for beginners. Um, I kind of classify myself in that beginner intermediate realm, so I like a harder tip because I feel like I have more control of the lettering this one I like. I typically end up with bigger letters than using the soft tip or the pilot brush pen, um, but this one I feel like I can highlight as well. It does take a second to dry um, and I like the thicker barrel. So let me just, I'm going to write a uh, zebra brush pen just so you can kind of see the difference here. So here are all the ones and you can see they'll shadow a little bit in the Hobonichi, but not a ton. They don't bleed through or anything. Oops. See, the zebra brush pen takes a while to dry down. The Tombows dry pretty quick. The Pilot I find dries pretty quick just because it's an extra fine tip. Um, but this one, uh, the zebra brush pen's pretty inky, but I do like how it writes. Um, I don't do any calligraphy on here. I don't do calligraphy under pressure. <laughs> But let me show you these on the 120 GSM paper too, so we can double check if they don't bleed through. So just so you can see, we don't really have any bleed through. Um, you can kind of see the zebra brush pen, I assume, from shadowing, but it's really not that bad. 
And these dry down really quickly on this paper. It's just more porous than the Tumblr River paper. Okay, I think the last couple things I have in here are just some miscellaneous uh, pens and then we can move on to fountain pens from there. So let me just show you all the other pens I have. So I keep a Sharpie ultra fine point uh, in my bag. I don't use these in my planners, but if I have like a tab I need to label or I always feel like I need to label something <laughs> that's not in my planner, this is just good to have. I'm not going to swatch it because I know it bleeds through on both sets of paper. I have a Sakura Jelly Roll in number 10. So this is a really bold tip. It writes pretty well over um, these particular black markers, but because the Tombows are, I think they're water-based. I could be totally wrong, don't quote me. The gel pen doesn't behave super well over these. It will to a point. So like, let me just, like you can kind of see it but it's not very vibrant versus if I went in with my, this is the soft tip. If I go like this, this one's drying out. And then I go in with my gel pen. It's much more bold. So I like the, the 10 over my um, brush pens if I want to like have lettering pop. Sometimes I will do this over the uh, Tombow Dill brush pen just to like lighten a section up as well so you don't get like a true white accent but you'll get like a lighter version of your color accent because it kind of like seeps through but definitely a go-to white gel pen for me. Next, I have one Zig Clean color dot. This is in the gray color. I have purchased a few more of these in the past, but I don't typically reach for them because I find that the color is always extremely different than the cap and it, I don't know, that bothers me. <laughs> but um, these are nice. They're a good like dotting tool and depending on the pressure, you can get a variation in dots. And then they also have an, a very fine, um, like liner tip on the end here. So this is the uh, Zayclean color dot in gray. I don't use these very much in this particular planner because as you can see, they don't dry like super evenly, um, but they do not bleed through on this paper. So there's still a good option if you like these and or and you have a similar planner to me. This I do like using in the Tomoe River paper. It still will kind of dry with this variation, but I find that they hold up really well on this paper and I like to use them in here. I don't really use the fine liner side all that much. And I would call this more of like a green based gray than a blue based. Okay, so I only keep one gel pen on me and that is the Pentel Energel. This is in the Kalena body style. So these pens come looking a little bit different. I found mine on jet pens and I currently have this in a 0 0.5 with a 0 0.5 refill in here. I know they come in like a four, a seven, and I think a three now, last time I checked. I don't like using the 0 0.5 in here and, and I'm not gonna bother because I know it's going to smear. Um, some people have really good success with like the 0 0.4, the 0 0.3 on the Tomoe River paper, and they say that it, it dries down. In my climate, I have not experienced that, so I'm just not even going to <laughs> risk it, but this is the pen that I've been using in my bullet journal lately, So, and it's definitely my favorite. You can highlight it. It dries extremely fast on non Tomoe River paper, and uh, I just enjoyed the experience and the refill's been in a lot of different pens, but there's just something about a good old Pentel Energel Kalena with the larger barrel and the grip and they're just super comfortable for me. So this is my main go-to pen for pretty much anything that's not in a Hobonichi product and it's the one I reach for the most. And as you can tell, my barrel is getting <laughs> pretty beat up because I just buy more refills as I go. I think this is in like the mint color, but yeah. So definitely my favorite gel pen and the one I go to the most. I also keep a pencil in here and this is just a Bic and 0.5 millimeter and I use these to sketch out spreads ahead of time. I don't do that as much in my Hobonichi, but I definitely do that in my bullet journal and it's just hard to beat a pencil. 
Okay, so now let's talk about fountain pens <laughs> and we might be far enough into this where this needs to be a separate video. But I actually own three fountain pens and they are the Pilot Vanishing Point and Extra Fine. I have the Ferris Wheel Press Brush Pen in Fine and this is the white color. And I have a Sailor uh, 1911S uh, pen and this is in the 2021 colorway. It's like a cranberry color with silver sparkles in it and really like this one as well. This is definitely my lightest pen. Uh, this is my heaviest pen and this one is in between. So the pen I use the most by far is my Vanishing Point. This is what I use in my Hobonichi. It also works well on this planner as um, this notebook paper as well but this is in the matte black i bought mine on jet pens if i remember right and again this is in the extra fine so this is the finest tip that they offer in this pen i write very small so i like having it the nice thing about this pen is that it's it's a clicker and it's retractable and i find that for like a fountain pen on the go i really like that this sort of sticks alongside my hobonichi and it's almost always right side up i haven't had any issues with things spilling or things like that um the matte black is definitely showing some wear but i use this on a daily basis since about february of 2021 so it does get used every single day because i use it every single day i've not experience like ink drying up in the nib or anything like that but I do have to refill this one very often I refill every two to four weeks um but I like to clean my pens on a monthly basis because I have three of them it takes me 15 minutes and I feel like that's going to prolong the life of my pens but again I'm very new to fountain pens so <laughs> cleaning on a monthly basis may be hurting them. I'm not entirely sure, but this is my favorite writer. Um, I like the fountain pen because I don't have to use a pencil board because I'm not applying a lot of pressure. It's very easy to write with these because they kind of glide along the paper. I've had some people ask me if um, I find these to be scratchy and I think every nib is a little bit different. My particular nib I do not find to be scratchy at all but I've heard a lot of people say that the extra fine is scratchy for them so because I've only owned one I can't really speak to that um, but I do have this inked with uh, D. Atramentis Archive Ink. So this is the Diatramentus Archive Ink. This is my main go-to ink. I found mine off Amazon. It's a 45 millimeter uh, milliliter bottle. And <laughs> I think this is gonna last me several years because I refill this um, every time from here and I may be down to here. So it'll probably last me two to three years. I do not think the ink goes bad, but Again, novice, <laughs> don't really know. But I like this um, particular ink because it dries very quickly in my uh, Tomoe River paper. And I like it in my extra fine. It, I don't like a lot of, <laughs> I'm the worst fountain pen user. I actually don't like a lot of shading and I don't like shadowing. I want a black pen that is really inky. The only reason I really find myself using a fountain pen in here versus like a, um, ballpoint pen like the uni jet stream is the uni jet stream just became inconsistent for me over time it wasn't writing the same across the paper and i would find that it would skip a lot out of nowhere <laughs> and i never had that issue in 2019 i don't know if it's because the paper changed or the ink formula changed or or what was going on with that but i definitely didn't have a very good experience with them in this year so this one always writes it's always consistent it is archive quality it dries on top of the paper it dries within 10 seconds and i can highlight it with a tombow uh, dill brush pen within about 30 seconds so it sort of ticks off all those boxes i don't need to use a pencil board when i'm using this because i'm not writing pressure like i mentioned earlier and um, I have a lot of people ask if it's hard to write with these because the clip is there and I actually find I, I essentially hold it like this like I just hold the clip and then it rests on my lower fingers I don't have any issues doing that um, another thing that I heard from Goulet pens and just how I handle fountain pens in general if you're curious is I hold my pen very high it may not really be able to see this angle but I am 
if this is 90 degrees, I am like 10 degrees off. I have a very steep writing angle and I think that helps me write pretty small and I don't have any issues with ink flow with this pen when I'm writing in that direction. I'm gonna just show you that this pen works really well on this paper as well. So let me write this. Yeah, so by far my favorite fountain pen. I like the all black matte look. I think it's pretty sophisticated and doesn't show a lot of wear and it's when I reach for a ton. So the next fountain pen I wanna talk about is my Ferris Wheel Press brush pen. So this one does have a twist on off cap. I think that this one is about the same price. I think this is like 144 and this was like 140. So still fairly expensive. Mine has the steel nib. I think they now offer these with a gold nib. Mine is the steel, it is in the fine and it writes large and in charge, but it it's also because it has a steel nib. I think it's not super flexible. So I find my handwriting looks very similar with this than it does with my Pentel Energel, which is another reason why I like it. Um, again, I like this because I don't feel like I need to put as much pressure on when I write. I like the weight of a heavier pen and I think the barrel is gorgeous and it's starting to kind of tarnish in over time as I use it. So this is the Ferris Wheel Press brush pen. And because I'm boring, this also has <laughs> Diatromensis Archive Ink. I like using this one for journaling lately. I also have used this one in this particular planner, like in place of my brush, of my gel pen. My gel pen definitely comes out darker. There is a little bit of shading that you see in here. I like this one in here as well. Um, if I want like a bolder tip look, I've thought about moving to this. The only thing is that uncapping and recapping in a planner, it takes a little bit of extra time and I'm not really one to do that. So I primarily use this one for journaling and it does take just an extra second to dry compared to my uh, vanishing point just because it is a bolder tip, but I really like how my handwriting looks on this. I like how it feels and I've considered picking up more in other colors, but I know I don't need it. <laughs> I try and talk myself out to it, but yeah, I really like this particular pen and um, like the Ferris uh, Wheel Press products in general. Okay, so the last fountain pen I have is this guy here. This is my most expensive fountain pen and it is my lightest. It is a resin material, so it's essentially plastic. It's really lightweight and it is another really good journaler. I haven't used this in a month, so I don't even know if it's gonna write. So let's see. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty dry. Sailor 1911S. Yeah. This one's pretty dried out. It's the one I actually use the least. I did use this one as my primary journaler. I have this in a fine tip. Um, my handwriting looks very different in this, I feel, compared to the other ones. I mean, it's still similar. It's my handwriting, but um, this one I currently have inked with Ferris Wheel Press um, Boudoir Brown, Bordeaux Brown. I'll have to leave all the colors down below. I'm so bad with names, but let me just show you. Yeah, this isn't the best representation of this pen because I know it can be a little bit bolder than that because the I haven't used it very much. It's got the ink in it, but because this one is lightweight with my hands, I prefer it posted, which basically means I prefer the cap on the back. So it's a little bit longer, but this is a really good like long form journaler because of how lightweight it is and your hand's not gonna get as tired if you're taking a ton of notes or anything like that. It does have a twist cap. It does have a pen clip if that is something Thing that you like and I think it's just fun that it's the 2021 edition because that's the year I got into fountain pens so it's sort of like memorable in that way. So the last thing I want to talk about is the inks that I have. I want to try and do some swatches here and then I'll show you the tools that I use to keep my fountain pens clean. Okay, so first of all, let's swatch my Diatromentis because this is my favorite. I'm going to try and do a cotton swab swatch. I've never done this before so this could end uh, terribly but this is the ink I use the most. It will sort of shade with darker pens. It um, 
isn't like the blackest black I guess is what I'm trying to say but with my fine points it looks pretty deep still and it's one that I reach for quite a bit and because I know it dries and I trust it you just can't beat it <laughs> um the next ink I have is from Pilot this is the um Takesumi Iroshizuku. I hope I said that correctly. I just have a 15 milliliter bottle of this. This one I really love the color of um, for a black. It's a pretty rich black, but I cannot get this to dry down nicely in my uh, Hobonichi, so I don't reach for it a lot in that planner, but it does work out pretty well in this planner. The other larger bottle I have, this is again, I think 15 milliliters. This is Diamine uh, Ancient Copper. This is one of my absolute favorites. It's sort of like a true coppery uh, rose gold color, which I really, really like. I like writing in this one. Um, again, I find it kind of like will smear a little bit. It comes out really kind of a rich red over there, but over here it's more of a rust on the Tomoe River paper. But this is again, one of my favorite inks. And then I have um, some chargers, I think three of them, from Ferris Wheel Press. These are their charger sets, so they just come in like five milliliter samples, which is enough to refill your pen a couple of times. So I definitely will find myself picking these up. I'm gonna have to list what these names are. I'll do it either on screen or in the description box um, because they just have like the shorthand, like this is BDB, which I think is that um, Bordeaux Brown that I currently have inked in my Sailor. But that one's really pretty to write in. I also like having these colored inks that are still pretty dark to use when I journal in like um, my Hobonichi Techo or my Hobonichi Cousin because they have the grid colors and um, having a little bit of colored ink is fun. I think this is Candy Marsala, which looks pretty similar on this paper. And this is a green that I really like. Get these swatch a little blue on this paper though yeah so it comes out like a teal over there a teal over here very pretty so those are the inks that i currently own um, and use in my fountain pens regularly the other two things that i have are a, a ball tip syringe and basically what i do when i clean my pens out i will um, fill this with water and sort of force um, some water through the nib if you want to see a video on how to do this there's a really good one from Goulet pens i will highly recommend their channel everything i've sort of learned about fountain pens comes from their channel they have a video on pretty much every single fountain pen out there so like i found like how to refill the pilot vanishing point from them and how to clean a pilot vanishing point and I watched all those before I even purchased the pen so I will find them and link those videos down below if you want to look but ball tip syringe is really good for cleaning out your nib when you're switching ink colors and also the refilling process is significantly easier if you have one of these this is just a a large tip syringe. I found mine on Amazon in like a five pack. I wish it was a little bit of a narrower needle because the, um, I don't want to open it up and get, get everywhere, but my vanishing point, the, the refillable cartridge or the cartridge converter rather, because I don't use cartridges. I just um, fill up the converters on all of my pens. It has a, a narrower opening with like an agitator that sometimes it's hard to like get the ink all the way in there without kind of overflowing, but the other two um, converters are really easy for me to refill with this. So this just keeps your hands a little bit cleaner. You don't need it. You can refill just using the converter in the ink bottle, but this one it was worth the, the $2 buy and this was definitely worth the $2 buy. So these are the two tools that I would uh, highly recommend picking up if you are getting into fountain pens. Again, I'm still new to the game here, so definitely not an expert, but I have three. I find three to be a good number because I use them all regularly. Um, this one you saw was a little bit dry because I haven't been journaling with it as much. I've been leaning towards this, so now I'm actually going to have to clean this one out to, you know, give the tip some new life and get the ink flowing again as, as I needed. But I clean my pens on a monthly basis, which basically means that I put the ink, I pull all the ink out, put it back in their bottle, do an ink color swap, and in that process I clean out the nib 
and I clean out the cartridge uh, using the ball tip syringe and just running water and then I let them dry uh, overnight so that they're completely dry before I refill them the next day and that works really well for me. I'll typically do them all at once or I'll do two so I have one to write with and then kind of swap them out from there. So yeah, hopefully this was useful for you. This is kind of a timestamp of the pens that I'm currently into and the inks that I am enjoying and using regularly. Let me just show you if these um, bled through. None of them did. Super great. I already know they didn't on the Tomoe River paper because that's one of my favorites, but um, hopefully that was interesting for you guys. If you have any questions, let me know down below. I will try and list all of this stuff in the description box so that you can find it um, if you want to. And thank you for sticking around this long if you have, and thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.